It is now time for member statements. I recognize the member for Lanark, Frontenac, Kingston. Thank you, Speaker. This government recently announced capital funding to nonprofit organizations across the province to ensure communities have safe and ready access to vital programming activities and spaces. My thanks to Minister Lumpston and the work the Ministry of Tourism, Culture and Sport does, along with the Ontario Trillium Foundation, to support and improve infrastructure. Everything from purchasing equipment and building new spaces to retrofits or repairs. Speaker, a total of 12 organizations in my riding of Lanark, Frontenac, Kingston received funding. Organizations like Yak Youth Services in Perth. With their funding, they're upgrading their kitchen facilities so they can continue to make healthy meals and snacks and provide a safe and supportive place for youth. The Carlton Place Curling Club will use its grant to purchase and install a new chiller to allow the club to remain operational for recreation, gatherings and emergencies. And the Montague and District Seniors Forget-Me-Not Club will use its funding to make infrastructure improvements to the only space in the community for seniors' programs and events. Earlier this year, I had the honour of meeting with councillors and community volunteers at the new covered outdoor rink in Charbot Lake. Speaker, this government will continue to help build healthy and vibrant communities throughout Ontario by strengthening the impact of the province's non-profit sector and supporting social determinants of health. Congratulations to all organizations in my riding that receive funding, and thank you for all your contributions to the people in your community. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for London West. Uh, thank you very much, Speaker. Speaker, on this last day of February, I want to congratulate the London Black History Month Coordinating Committee for a fantastic lineup of events. There was the wonderful and moving opening gala at Museum London, where a new on-the-spot app was launched, chronicling the history of black communities in the London area since the early 1820s. There was the third annual Essence and Culture Awards, an inspiring celebration of black excellence and a showcase for the extraordinary talents of black Londoners. Kudos to Colin Caleb and Michelle Brissett and all the ECA board members for a phenomenal evening. There was the premiere of a new documentary about the Fugitive Slave Chap Chapel, built in 1848 as a place of worship for former slaves who fled to Canada on the Underground Railroad, which was restored and relocated last summer to Fanshawe Pioneer Village. There was the thrilling performance of Freedom, the Spirit and Legacy of Black Music with London Symphonia at the magnificent Metropolitan United Church. The show was created for the Stratford Festival by the multi-talented Bo Dixon, a graduate of London South Collegiate Institute in London West. February also saw the Fugitive Slave Chapel and the Metropolitan United Church performance space recognized by the Lieutenant Governor with two of just four provincial and highly prestigious excellence in conservation awards. Many thanks to all the London Black History Month Coordinating Committee volunteers for such amazing opportunities to learn, engage, and be inspired. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Scarborough Centre. The February Ontarians celebrate Black History Month for the many great accomplishments and contribution of the people of African descent to Ontario's economy and safety in the area of research and development, medicine, business, education, sports, festival, politics, and much more. We celebrate these accomplishments to our ancestral way to our ancestral way to, by libation, singing, dancing, drumming, poetry, and merriment together. Only last Tuesday at Queen's Park, with many in attendance from our Premier Doug Ford, to our, our stakeholders, constituent members of the Legislative Assembly, legislative staff, and many community members, including staff and volunteer. I thank you all for supporting the event with your presence, effort, and speeches to make the event a resounding success. I'd like to use the opportunity to thank our sponsors, Mr. Chris Campbell 
of the United Brotherhood of Carpenters and Joiners of America, Mr. Ivan Don of the International Union of Painters, and Mr. Rooney Clark of the Plumber and Pipe Fitters Union, Ms. Daniel Kurtentev uh, of uh, Ubanti Art, Ms. Chief T of Grilla, and Mrs. Julia Bien of Grandview Event Management. I'd like to thank all the members. Thank you very much. <clears throat> the next statement, the member for Hamilton West, and Castor Dundas. Good morning, Speaker. Uh, while our federal New Democrat counterparts won Pharmacare for Canadians, ensuring access to medication for those who need it, this provincial government is instead allowing huge corporations like Galen Weston and Loblaws to siphon money from our public health care for private profit. Yesterday, we learned through investigative reporting that Shoppers Drug Mart is pressuring staff to bill for unnecessary and un prompted medication reviews. Here's an example. A woman received a random call from her pharmacy at Chopper's to check if she was still using her inhalers for asthma. She said yes, and the call ended in under five minutes. She later learned that Chopper's billed Ontario Meds check for that unsolicited call. Ontario Meds checks or medication reviews when done correctly is a great service, but Chopper's isn't doing it correctly. It seems that they are doing it not for the patient but for profit. It gets even worse. Each meds check creates more administrative work on a frustrated and shrinking group of physicians who have to sign off on every record of a meds check call. Like many of its other decisions, this government has a proven record of working for insiders and huge corporations like Walmart and Staples. Big surprise! The person this government appointed as the director of pandemic response worked as a lobbyist for Sharpers Drug Mart. So maybe you're one of the 2.3 million Ontarians who don't have a family doc, or maybe you're stuck waiting in an emergency room with minor medical issues because you can't get a family doc. If that's the case, remember where to direct your anger. This insider first PC government. Member statements. The member for Richmond Hill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As we reflect on the significance of the Nonprofit Appreciation Week, I'm honoured to witness the culmination of our collective efforts in celebrating the invaluable contributions of nonprofit organisations across Ontario. Under Bill 9, the Nonprofit Sector Appreciation Week Act, we recognise the dedication from February 12 to 16, 2024. Throughout the week, alongside my esteemed colleagues, we had the privilege of presenting certificates to all and, all and recognition to numerous deserving organizations. Our local event on February 16, held in the City of Richmond Hill Municipal Office, epitomized the spirit of gratitude and admiration. Joined by Minister Michael Parsa and Richmond Hill Mayor David West, we honor 31 nonprofit organizations for their unwavering support and transformative impact and to our community. I also like to I've also hosted a nonprofit sector appreciation reception at Queen's Park last night, where we extended our heartfelt appreciation to nonprofits across Ontario. Let us continue to champion the noble cause of the uplifting and uplifting our nonprofit sector, not just during this designated week only, but every week. Together, let's celebrate, celebrate these unsung heroes and reaching our society fabric. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member statements, the member for Humber River, Black Creek. Thank you, Speaker. Recently in my community, two innocent lives were targeted by senseless violence. A 16-year-old youth waiting for the bus to take him to a volleyball game was indiscriminately shot in the face. He suffered critical, life-altering injuries. And nearby on the very next day, Mr. Adu Boache, a 39-year-old man, was shot multiple times and killed. Speaker, he came from Ghana just three months ago to build a better life here and support his family back home. Now he's gone, leaving behind a grieving wife and four children. Two completely innocent lives targeted. And for what? 
for nothing, absolutely nothing. These senseless acts destroy lives and families, but also rob communities of their feelings of safety. Speaker, the Ghanaian community held a vigil for them this past weekend, and our faith community in Toronto Police led a prayer walk yesterday. They did it to bring community together, to comfort one another, to mourn. They did it to begin restoring feelings of safety and to build hope for the future, and I thank them deeply. And, Speaker, collectively, we must all do more to stop this senseless violence. We must get these guns off the street and stop them at our borders. We must continue to strengthen and build the relationship between communities and our police who are here to serve and protect us. We must support victims of crime. And, Speaker, we must invest more to find out and intervene when a person begins to gather that darkness within themselves to cause such terrible harm. We must find them and change the course of their lives before they lose their humanity and take the lives of others. Speaker, there is hope and there are solutions, and it is our obligation, our more moral imperative, to deliver them. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements, the member for Niagara West. Thank you, Speaker. Our government for the people is getting it done for the people of Ontario by keeping costs down, growing the economy, and making it easier to build infrastructure for growing communities like mine in Niagara West. Last week, our government introduced the Get It Done Act, and Speaker, our government is getting it done for Niagara. Right now, work is underway at the new South Niagara Hospital, the largest public infrastructure project in Niagara's history, as well as the new West Lincoln Memorial Hospital in Grimsby. These are two critical health care projects for Niagara. Our government said, let's get it done. We're expanding rural broadband in 30 local communities across Niagara West. Fiber optic cable is already in the ground. We said, let's get it done. Our government is investing over $2 million to connect 7,600 more people in Niagara to primary care. People across the region said, we need family doctors. This government said, let's get it done. Our government is expanding GO train service to Niagara. Last year, we added more round trips per week. Commuters are looking for more trains. Our government said, let's get it done. Our government is expanding the $1.2 billion Building Faster Fund to small municipalities like rural communities in Niagara. When it comes to water, to roads, and to bridges, this government is getting it done. In January, I joined the Minister of Economic Development, Job Creation and Trade to welcome $65 million in new investments for Niagara's manufacturing sector in Smithville. We said that we need to become a manufacturing powerhouse, and once again, we're getting it done. Speaker, from building houses, hospitals, keeping costs down for families and businesses, or just keeping our word, this government is getting it done. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Beaches, East York. Good morning, uh, Mr. Speaker. Happy winter, everyone. I am beyond proud to speak today about a Canadian filmmaker extraordinaire, Norman Jewison, a man with strong roots in beautiful Beaches, East York. On January 20, 2024, we lost Mr. Jewison at the age of 97, a long life worthy of grand celebration and thoughtful acknowledgement. He was known for directing films which examined social and political issues, all while making controversial or complicated subjects in easy reach to all audiences. <clears throat> he inspired us with standout films like Moonstruck, Fiddler on the Roof, The Cincinnati Kid, and In the Heat of the Night, just to name a few. I would like to think that the formative years spent in our beautiful beaches neighbourhood contributed to his keen sense of curiosity and creativity. With Lake Ontario at his doorstep and the small town in a big city feel of Queen Street East. It was the landscape that he drew on to form his respect for human rights, hard work, and humour. <clears throat> he returned to Canada from the United States in 1978, settling in the Caledon area and establishing a farm that would produce prize winning cattle. The Canadian Film Centre in Toronto was founded by him and incorporated in 1986. He is truly one of Ontario's finest gems. Look out for a number of local tributes to Norman Jewison, including some of the most beloved films screened at our community's most beloved 100-year-old Fox Theatre. May his life and work be remembered forever. Thank you. The next member's statement, 
would appear to be the member for Thornhill. This Monday marked the launch of One Fare, fully funded by our government. We're keeping the cost down for public transit riders in Thornhill and GTA. That's right. Now riders will only pay once, and they can transfer for free between participating trans uh, transit, including GO, TTC, YRT, MyWay, Brampton Transit, and the DRT. So, Speaker, we're making life more affordable by putting money back into the pockets of transit riders where it belongs. One fare program will save commuters an average of $1,600 each year. And, Speaker, Thornhill borders on the City of Toronto. Students attending U of T, TM. MU, York University, they're stuck with double fees daily. But that stops right now because our government has made it easier than ever to access transit with this system and also with pay your way. Riders can pay with Presto or with their credit cards or debit cards. No more rushing to reload the funds. Speaker, these programs will boost ridership by $8 million per year, which means we're taking cars off the road decreasing traffic and pollution. Thanks to the minister and the associate minister of transportation, people will benefit from this, especially our students and seniors. And when I announced it at the Promenade Mall in Thornhill, it received a huge round of applause. Our government will never stop advocating to make life more affordable and convenient, building a great province to live and work for generations to come. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Windsor to come see. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, last month, there was a transformative announcement that was delivered in Windsor and will phase out thousands of truly dreaded trips up the 401 to London. No offense to my colleagues across the aisle. Uh, thanks to the Minister of Health and the Minister of Children, Community and Social Services, Essex Kent Lambton will receive an additional $4.5 million in annual funding to increase our local pediatric health services. More children than ever will be, get the care that they need for the future when they need it and right at home in our own community. This funding supports a new after-hours pediatric emergency diversion clinic at Met Campus, together with increased support for children's speech language pathology, physiotherapy, and occupational therapy rehabilitation services at the John McGivney Children's Centre in Sandwich and the Connections Earlier Centre in Walkerville, the Children's Treatment Centre of Chatham Kent and Pathway Centre for Children in Sarnia are also receiving new support for their services. Now, in contrast to the past, this government goes beyond the talk and continues to choose to invest. The Regional Acute Care Hospital in Canada 42, the repatriation of nurses working in Detroit, support for in vitro fertilization for the first time, new nursing school spaces at the University of Windsor, new MRIs, the cardiac catheterization lab, and nuclear accelerator Windsor Regional Hospital have been taken off the shelf and delivered now that the years of inaction are over. Thank you. Thank you very much. That concludes our member's statements for this morning. I beg to inform the House.